Hello, I'm Lindsay Harris, a PhD candidate in history at Tulane University. I'm currently researching and writing my dissertation on transnational nursing networks in the interwar period. During the COVID-19 pandemic, I came across a small collection within Tulane University's special collections, which enabled me to investigate the role of multilingualism within the nursing profession in interwar Warsaw. This collection was the Amelia Greenwald Papers. It's composed of three boxes and contains documents in both English and Polish. Tulane University acquired the collection in 1989 as a gift from Amelia Greenwald's cousin, Lisa Lotta Levy Weil. Ms. Weil was a philanthropist and staple of the New Orleans Jewish community. Amelia Greenwald adopted Lisa Lotta in 1939 so the young girl could obtain a visa and escape Hitler's Germany. Naturally, this fascinating story caused the collection to receive a great deal of biographical attention in the 1990s. Yet, there remains a considerable amount of primary sources on nursing in interwar Europe, not only within this collection, but in other collections in the United States that require further inquiry. My dissertation sets out to show how nurses in a recovering post-imperial Europe operated and carried out public health campaigns through transnational networks which were forged by camaraderie during their service in the Great War. A chapter within my dissertation will focus on Warsaw, Poland and the Amelia Greenwald Papers. Based upon my research, I found that the bulk of the Amelia Greenwald papers documents interwar Warsaw as a scientific center of Jewish professional life in the nursing and medical fields. As an independent state, Poland was at the center of a new post-imperial Europe and Warsaw was one of the nation's medical hubs. Partitioned no longer, the Second Polish Republic was composed of substantial territory from the fallen Austrian, Prussian, and Russian empires. Poland's central locality within Europe engulfed a post-war migratory wave following the Great War, the Bolshevik Revolution, and subsequent civil wars within Central and Eastern Europe. The legacy of imperial partition, combined with a post-war migratory wave, created a multilingual landscape within the nursing and medical professions in Warsaw. One of the major questions I contemplated while looking at this collection was, what does the Jewish medical and nursing community's multilingualism in interwar Warsaw reveal to us, and why does it matter? To answer this question, we have to look into why Amelia Greenwald was in Warsaw in the interwar years. Amelia Greenwald was a U.S. nurse who completed her nursing degree at Choro Infirmary in New Orleans in 1908, and then completed her postgraduate education in psychiatric nursing at the Phipps Clinic at Johns Hopkins. She served with the American Expeditionary Force during the Great War. Then, in 1923, she was employed by the Joint Distribution Committee and given the assignment to establish a school of nursing at Stars Konik Hospital in Warsaw. The School of Nursing at Stars Konik Hospital provided a first-class nursing education to young Jewish women in Warsaw. Documents within this collection discuss how Jewish women were not allowed to study with the Polish Red Cross. Through Greenwald's documentation of Warsaw, we see how anti-Semitism plagued Warsaw's Jewish community. The Star Zakonik Hospital, or the New Order Jewish Hospital, was the only hospital in Warsaw allowed to treat Jewish patients. Greenwald documents how Jewish patients are denied entry and medical care at Christian hospitals in Warsaw. Despite Warsaw's religious intolerance towards its Jewish population, the Star Zakonik Hospital was impressive. It housed eight medical pavilions and 1,100 beds, and it gained a nursing school on its grounds. 
Stars Iconic Hospital experienced a severe nurse shortage following the Great War and the Polish-Soviet War. The JDC's goal was to increase the hospital's nursing staff, and U.S. nurse Amelia Greenwald was selected by the JDC to lead the project and serve as directress of the nursing school. However, she faced one major limitation. She did not speak Polish. Every task Greenwald took on, whether it was securing the building permits for the school's renovation or lecturing to its new pupils, all was done through an interpreter. Greenwald's lack of language skills caused her to document the dynamic multilingualism by which the medical and nursing communities of interwar Warsaw studied and communicated. Russian, French, and German were the preferred languages of nursing students, lecturers, and doctors alike at Stara Zakonik Hospital. Greenwald was shocked by what little Polish was spoken by the nursing students that she added a Polish language course to the curriculum. In reality, the nursing students had very little Polish language skills and preferred speaking and learning in Russian and reading medical texts in Russian, French, and German. Greenwald was frustrated by their multilingualism as much as she admired it. She also feared that the School of Nursing at Stara Zakonik Hospital would face reprimand from the Polish government. She disclosed, you might get an idea of the intricacy of our teaching problem when I tell you that the Polish authorities are very sensitive about the languages used in their country and especially in their schools. They pay much more attention to this than one would believe. German and Russian seem to be the languages best known and most condemned here. Naturally, the Polish government insists that Polish be used though there are vast numbers of Polish citizens who can't speak that language because neither the Russians nor the Germans permitted its use when they were in power here. And that was most of the time till 1918. Most of our students speak Russian and but few of them know any Polish at all. Greenwald also concealed from the Polish government that courses were primarily given in Russian and German. She wrote, it is like waving a red flag in the face of a bull to let them hear lectures or classes given in Russian or German. Therefore, when any of the government officials visit us, as they occasionally do, we have to find an excuse to discontinue class. What does this tell us about interwar Poland? We are not only seeing the legacy of imperial partition within the territory that composed independent Poland, but also a disconnect between the Polish government's nationalizing sentiments and the cosmopolitanism exhibited by Jewish professionals in the nursing and medical fields in interwar Warsaw. This cosmopolitan spirit among nursing and medical professionals in interwar Central and Eastern Europe showcased a desire for greater scientific collaboration across national boundaries in an increasingly totalitarian political environment. Researching the Amelia Greenwald papers within Tulane University's special collections has provided me with the foundation for my dissertation as I set out to investigate its connection with other collections in the United States and Europe on nurses in the interwar period.